Welcome to today's Academy. I'm Zarathustra. I'm your host, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And today's uh, topic, we're going to talk about sexuality, spirituality, um, and if we have time, we get into marriage. Um, I know this is a very sensitive subject, uh, topic to talk about. A lot of people uh, they get very uncomfortable when you bring the word sex and they move around or they adjust themselves and um, it gets a little bit weird but uh, it is uh, a part of uh, whether we like it or not or admit it or not it's a very big factor of our lives uh, there's no escape from it so, and I'm going to put some light on it because it's been in darkness um, throughout most of our history of humanity. And uh, it needs to be brought to the light. So, we may even need more than one um, academy to talk about it and get into the details of it and bring the light to this aspect of our lives, which is very, very important. Um, so, I'm going to give you some ideas and and uh, give you something to think about and ponder upon, and uh, we go from there. And you let me know. You're welcome to write to me and uh, of your thoughts and your ideas, and uh, we'll just go one step at a time. Uh, so, for the moment, uh, we're going to do a simple meditation. Um, simply divert your attention. Bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts. Uh, this is a super easy type of meditation you can do. And it's very simple. All you have to do is... Follow the stream of your thoughts to where they come from. Where do your thoughts come from? What, what's, what's there before you think? So if you follow the stream of your thoughts inwards, you arrive to the source. And if you stay attentive, then you will realize that it's very quiet because thoughts come from a space, a place that is empty. They come from emptiness. So if you follow them inwards, they will lead you back. The thoughts will lead you back to the source of their origin, which is absolutely silence. So this is like a super easy way of entering into silence and entering into this unified field of oneness, this quiet place within yourself. So go ahead and bring your attention inwards. and dive into silence. And do it without an effort. Don't really try. There's no need to put effort into it and struggle with it. You can just very gently, very easily dive into this place. without really putting any kind of energy into it and effort, all you do is simply shift your attention from the other world towards the inner world. It must be effortless. If you're putting effort into it and you're trying to make something happen, then 
would say you're not doing it right. It has to be effortless. You're simply turning your attention inwards towards the source. The source of yourself. And just relax and you don't need to do any kind of mantra or any sort of visualization. You're simply keeping your attention on the source of your thoughts. And you'll see that everything's quiet. You dive into silence. Simply just hang out in this moment, hang out in, in the presence. And even if thoughts rises and you hear your mind getting engaged with thoughts, just be easy with it. Don't force anything. You're just keeping your attention on the source. You've brought your attention inwards. And if you catch any thoughts, you can just go back to where they come from. And then everything gets quiet. Just dive into this place. This space appears. You feel an expansion when you're quiet and you're hanging out here with yourself without pushing it. Space opens up. This is quite different than opposite of any kind of active meditations that we've been doing over the weekend. So this is simply bringing your attention inwards 
towards the source. The source of yourself. And sometimes you may experience your mind is running all over and thinking about, I forgot to send that email, I didn't pick up my clothes from the dry cleaner, and blah, blah, blah. It's okay, don't beat yourself up. Simply bring your attention back towards the one-pointedness. Come back to the witness. That which is here, that which is witnessing, that which is aware, Simply being here right now, being present, whatever is happening, what's happening with you. Are you anxious? Are you uncomfortable? Are you you're having a hard time concentrating? Or you can dive into silence. Just hang out with what's happening right now without pushing. Simply allow this moment to reveal its magic to you without any expectations. Just receive. It's opposite of the Western mind that is trying to do, do, do and accomplish things. You're doing the opposite. You're simply receiving. Rather than pushing it. Rather than trying to accomplish something. And now, gently you bring your attention back. It's a shift from the attention in towards the inner world. Now you're shifting your attention to the outer world. Now you... Coming back into your senses, bringing your attention back. So, good. See, once you get into the rhythm of doing it, you realize it's not really difficult. You have different tools uh, and you can use different kind of meditations. And if one day you don't feel like you can, you can simply be quiet and dive inwards. Then use active meditations. Stop jumping up and down. Do the hoo-hoo or shaking. Use your body. And that also works very well because when you're using the body, 
and you're moving it, you know, whether you're doing some jump ropes, you're running, you're jumping on a tram trampoline, or you're simply jumping up and down, and then you stop, and what it does, it just allows you to go in a deeper state of silence. So you have a lot of different options and uh, tools in your toolbox of how you can be quiet. So let's talk about sexuality and spirituality and the misconception worldwide hypnosis that is going on um, and it's an area that it's very sensitive as I mentioned, mentioned. Um, and it's not being talked about very much so it creates discomfort and that is let's just start from the basic of it the very basis is that I don't know how many of you have heard the word Tantra yeah Tantra okay and so Tantra and Tantra sexuality let's talk about the definition of Tantra T Tantra is is a Sanskrit Sanskrit work a uh, word and Tantra sexuality was practiced it goes back to about 15,000 years ago uh, it's ancient maybe even further back but uh, there is tantric temples in India they used to practice it they were tantrika there were priestesses and priests that both in India and in uh, ancient Egypt and also in Persian culture way back there has been priests and priestesses and if you do a little bit of homework you're going to see that there's been temples and there's been mystery schools teaching Tantra and the today there is Tantra is being practiced but also it's kind of got diluted so a lot of the practice is based on sex so uh, and it's kind of Tantra is coming back to life again and it's being talked about or taught but it's still not really being understood very well so the very meaning of Tantra is and this is very important you want to pay attention to this part it's Tantra sexuality is divine oneness through the union of the two opposites so let's pay attention to the to this definition the divine oneness means when the two are merging into each other div so what it does is it creates divine oneness through the union of the two opposites so so let's say the man and the woman they're merging into each other and what happens is when you learn how to practice Tantra tantric sexuality is being conscious uh, the man and woman they start by sitting cross-legged from each other and staring into each other's eyes and once you're doing it with a partner and then you learn how to synchronize your breathing with each other so you consciously synchronize uh, your breath with each other and there is a t different kind of mantras that you can be using and what it does is you're calling the name of God and you are inviting the presence to come into your union with your partner and as you are staring into each other's eyes and holding each other's hands and breathing in and later on when you get intimate and you enter you penetrate and you are merging into each other to Tantra 
what happens is when you're doing it correctly and you're breathing in and out together and your breath is synchronized as well as you are using uh, the um, different um, point of reference of the words of tantric uh, prayers and uh, meditation that you are doing simultaneously is that the idea is that for you and your partner to lose your separate identity into each other. So once you learn how to do this and you're doing it correctly, what happens is as you're merging into each other in this tantric union, is you lose your sense of separate individual being into the oneness. You lose yourself in the act of making love. And you cannot distinguish after a while whether you're the man or you're the woman, whether you're on the top, you're in the bottom, or if you are the bed or you're in a room, you will lose all senses of any separation. So you fall into complete oneness. And basically all you hear is, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, or wow. You hear things like that, you and your partner may be saying, but there is no subject and object. There won't be any more a man doing a woman or a woman doing a man. They lose themselves into the act and it becomes God. It becomes the one. That's why its definition is divine oneness through the union of the two opposites. So Tantra is basically when it was discovered and created is a form, a way of self-realization. It's a form of God realization. And it could be one of the fastest ways that you reach Godhead and you reach self-realization by losing your separate identity into the one and because naturally from childhood uh, from the time from the age we we go to puberty and we our hormone starts to change and our sexual urges begin to rise and sex becomes one of our major priorities and one of our major topics that is comes to your mind and it's hanging there and and a lot of us all we think about is having sex so it's not an accident that the emergence of a man and a woman or let's say even if it's the same sex but for now i'm not using uh, same sex I'm just saying the opposite sex and this is just for uh, um, simply explanation so uh, let's not get into that uh, that doesn't mean same two people from the same sex they can have tantric experiences as well but I'm just saying man and woman for this the um, simply for simplicity of the discussion. So this Tantra sexuality is very, very dangerous to the establishment because if it's taught correctly and we're educating our children, which they need to know about sexuality, and in the new world, in the new, in the higher level of consciousness, as we enter into fifth dimension and we are becoming self-awakened and learning 
finding out about our true purpose on this planet in recognizing true love and recognizing a higher level of consciousness is that we are going to have to restructure the way our society is and sex education becomes extremely important and it needs to come to light because it's in darkness and it's been in darkness for thousands of years because it is danger it's a danger to the establishment it's a danger to the religion it's a danger to the governments it's a danger to all the systems that are controlling us and is keeping us into separation because just tantra by itself can lead you into self-realization if it's done correctly and of course the system doesn't want you to become self-realized doesn't want you to open up your third eye and doesn't want you to be able to find any kind of ways that opens up all your chakras and allows you to reach and open up your crown chakra to have cosmic consciousness and have access to wisdom and realize that you are really God and you've never been separated from God. So sexuality is a way of helping you realizing that you are one. And that's very dangerous because ironically it happens to be for majority of people on the planet their favorite sport because if you're not sexually damaged in childhood and you haven't been traumatized then it's something you think about all the time and you desire all the time so what the system does the establishment establishment has created is that they realize this is very dangerous in order for the human being as a race to free itself and realize its divine oneness so since it's very dangerous to the establishment what they did is they created a lot of shame and guilt so from very early childhood what happens is your family, your parents, uh, your society, the school, the religious um, um, authorities, they begin to brainwash you that sex is bad and it's shameful and it's dark and there's a lot of fear and uh, guilt attached to it. So you're being discouraged from discovering your own sexuality. You're being discouraged of having orgasms, uh, whether you're having it with a partner or you're doing it through masturbation. And so these are all like red lights. So the moment you talk about it, uh, people get uncomfortable and they automatically unconsciously they're attaching anything re regarding sexuality to shame and fear and guilt this is what happens I remember when I was a kid uh, there was this thing that uh, about not doing not masturbating because if you masturbate uh, there was this false belief that you would get blind if you do a lot of masturbation as a teenager then you're gonna get blind so or you're gonna be punished by God or you're gonna go to hell so there was a lot of guilt and shame around it so let's look at this objectively something that is in order to reproduce for human 
race. So if we want to have children, we're going to have to have sex with our opposites. So how could this be shameful and fearful and a bad thing to do that in order to reproduce human beings on this planet, you have to have sex? And all mammals do that. So how could that be a shameful thing? What kind of stupidity is there? How stupid anyone can be to believe and not look at this unless we're really brainwashed and we've been really screwed up in our heads from childhood by shame and guilt and fear to second doubt your very, very primal in it desire of having sex and thinking that it's a bad thing when you actually each and every one of us here was is a product of our parents having sex with each other so how could that be a bad thing just use your logic for a moment just think logically that if there is this act between man and woman that leads into producing and creating a new human being and that's the same same thing in the nature with the rest rest of the mammals then how could it be a bad thing I don't know I can't figure it out what's bad about it two is as soon as you reach puberty all you think about is having sex and you're welcome to if you don't remember <laughs> that time well it's very simple start talking to the teenagers or rewind your tape and go back and see how much you used to think about sex or how much you think about it now most people I talk to who are honest and I know them um, fairly well and I'm able to talk to them and ask them questions I say how much do you think about sex and they tell me they pretty much think about it every day so if something you're thinking about every day or most of your time you think about it how could it be a bad thing? How could it be shameful? How could it be evil? How could it be dark? I, I don't understand that. I need someone to explain that to me because I can't figure it out. And I have been thinking about this for a number of years, trying to really make some sense out of it. But all I can think about is the fact that we're being brainwashed and still to this age, at this era, in 21st century, in year 2020, there is still no proper sex education and any kind of system, any kind of um, a sort of a school a general school in mass me ma in in the mainstream of talking about the benefits of having sex none that i know of and i can't find now let's talk about some of the benefit there is like at least 10 different benefits of every time you're having an orgasm so the nature has created sexuality to reproduce has created sexuality that you can come to full self-realization through having sex and that's tantric sexuality 
and something that you really take pleasure of and it's an act that really if you're doing it regularly you don't really want to go to war you don't really want to go and fight another country because you're getting it most of the time that most men most armies is full of men most of the men who want to go to war is because they're not getting it if you're having sex regularly you don't want to go to war you don't want to fight anybody you don't even want to be violent because you're very happy you're getting it regularly and look at yourself when you're getting it look how happy you are when you're really getting it right you're smiling, you're happy, you're kind, and when you're not getting it, you're bitchy, you're angry, you're an asshole, and you're judgmental. Because they cut off the very, very main energy center of your life, your sexual energy. Now, when you're sexually active and you're able to express yourself and you have gone beyond guilt and shame and, and you're allowing the flow to happen and you're having orgasms, every time you're having an orgasm, your body creates certain kind of chemicals and hormones. These, these chemical and hormones boost your immune system it's anti-aging it creates hormones that allows your hair to grow better you sleep better it creates hormones and agents in the body that you're able to fight disease uh, cold uh, pathogens um, it's just I'll just give you a little bit of the research I've done. For example, uh, orgasm helps the body to create a hormone. It's a DHEA that helps hair to grow. It produces HGH, which is human growth hormone. It creates oxytocin, which it's a hormone that helps people bond together and be kind to each other. It produces serotonin. It's a feel-good hormone. It's antidepressant. It creates another hormone. It's the immunoglobin, which is it's anti. Uh, it, it uh, boosts up your immune system so it's very good for um, cold and flu and as I mentioned it, it, it does stimulates the body to create um, all kinds of different chemicals to fight pathogens and uh, antioxidants it helps you sleep well um, it fights cancer. I mean, the benefits of orgasm is unbelievable. It's literally, it creates anti-pain medication, chemicals, creates anti-pain chemicals in your body. Uh, how many of you are used to having orgasm before you sleep at night? So you're masturbating you have an orgasm and then boom you sleep or you're nervous you're upset or whatever and you're having an afternoon or evening orgasm and then all of a sudden you're relaxed how could this be a bad thing I want to know that I want somebody to tell me that an action that produces and contributes to 
recreating human beings and brings smile to your face and makes you peaceful and happy and blissful, how could it be a bad thing? How did that happen to be shameful and bad except to control you? Except for society, for the establishment to disconnect you from yourself. And ultimately, sex can lead you to self-realization. It's one of the fastest, quickest way that you can come to full self-realization. Because to Tantra sexuality, divine oneness through the union of the two opposites. So the two opposites merge into each other and the two opposites, they lose their sense of separate individuality into the one. So the individual ego disappears into the divine consciousness and there's only one left. So I want to know what part of this is shameful and it's bad. Except 2,000, 3,000 years ago, whomever started to create this kind of nonsense, this stupid stupidity mentality that sex is dirty, sex is bad, and should not be practiced or anytime you're masturbating something's bad is going to happen to you is the only thing that comes to my mind is to control to control you and through this control and shame and guilt look what we have created the number one thing we have created is that we have, we're able to deprive ourselves and create a culture and a society that sexually is very repressed and very frustrated. So then as a result of that, sexuality has gone underground and it created pornography which is a multi, it's one of the biggest industries in the world. It's basically number one industry. It's even more money making than the arms and the weapon industry. Pornography, it's number one. So, and how do our children or the new generation of the kids learn about sexuality is they go on the internet and they watch porn but that's not the way you're gonna learn intimacy of how to be intimate with your partner that's not the wrong, right education so we're gonna have the wrong education because the pornography has nothing to do with intimacy and tantra sexuality it doesn't teach you anything in that area and actually what it does it's it actually damages. So, so that's one, one part of it. And then because of this being deprived and sexually being frustrated as the whole, then it creates prostitution. So we have created, which is one of the oldest um, occupation on the planet of being a sex worker. Now, I don't have anything against sex workers. Uh, I'm not putting them down or anything. Uh, don't take me wrong. But what I'm saying is this mentality, this deceit of that we've been under the deception and we've been programmed and conditioned to believe that sex is bad and it's shameful and we should feel guilty has created 
prostitution, as well as has created all kinds of sexual dysfunctions, and to the point that it's become pervert. So just look around you and how many women, how many kids from whether boys or girls, but let's say mostly girls, have been traumatized sexually in early age? How many of you have been approached and touched inappropriately either by your parents or by your cousins or by a babysitter or different people that they have traumatized you? Whether you've been just touched inappropriately or you've been raped or you've been abused in some sexual way. This is all because the church, the mosque, the, the uh, religion is condemning and brainwashing, the society is brainwashing us that sex is a bad thing and naturally it goes underground. And all of this has to change in the higher level of consciousness. If we are to enter into fifth dimensional consciousness and we are to evolve into the Superman, then we have to leave behind the old, old systems. And it has to start with sexuality. It's one of the number one things that must come to light and must evolve into a higher dimension. And that means by educating our youngsters from early age about sexuality, making them understand what it is, making them understand this energy that they have, how they can control this energy and how it should be used to actually teaching our youngsters as they evolve, as they come to a puberty and as they get stimulated and they get aroused is, and it's there at the most part, the strongest, it's very powerful energy that all of a sudden is awakened in your body. You're 13 years old and 12, 13, 14 years old, you're a girl and you start developing boobs and hips and you have your menstrual cycle and you're a boy and you start having hard on and you're, you're developing hair and your facial hair changes and your voice changes. It's very confusing. It's a very confusing process and we have no as a culture, no container. We don't have an area that they can safe, safely enter into this area and be educated and learn how to use their energy. And that is a perfect time for us to teach them Tantra, to hold their hand and to teach them that this sexual energy actually could be used for self-realization. That's a perfect time to create an enlightened society with our children. That's where we start because, yeah, I mean, when do you want to do it? You can't do it when you're 60 or 70 or 80 years old. We ha if we're going to make a revolution and change the world, we have to start with, with educating our children into the new world and to create systems, styles of doing it. So if we introduce them correctly to sexuality so we can alleviate prostitution, we can alleviate pornography, and also, by educating them correctly, the rate of perversion will drop drastically and eventually we can get rid of perverts too. Because every human being 
from childhood gets an opportunity to learn about sexuality and Tantra and making them realize that actually this innate desire for having sex is a is a good thing it could be used in a correct way so we learn to be sensitive we learn to be kind and we learn to use this powerful energy for enlightenment which we're doing the opposite by suppressing this energy all we do is we're creating anger because we're suppressing this energy and it's going underground and it's getting dark and we can see what's happening in the world and now with all these uh, new information coming out which is nothing new about it it's just coming to the general public about all these pedophiles and all these uh, men are abusing little children sexually now it's coming out which has been around ever since the ever since by why are we doing that why are we um, have to do something like this We're doing it because we're sick in our minds. And how are we sick in our minds? By men wanting to have sex with an eight-year-old or nine-year-old or touching him inappropriately, which now it is coming out. Again, there's nothing, this is nothing new. This has been happening for thousands of years. By why? Why is it happening? because of a sick mind someone's twisted in here someone's really fucked up here and they're twisted in their head because of what because our society the church the priest the the mosque the religion kept telling us this is dark this is bad this is shameful you can have sex, you shouldn't think about it, you shouldn't touch yourself. Which sexuality has everything that we need to evolve into a higher dimension. Everything that we need is there already. And we all think about it and we all desire it. I don't care how old you are and who you are. Majority in past 10 years that I've been doing this professionally, I have met thousands of people. Thousands of people who've either been sexually abused or traumatized. That's one part of it. And another part of it that they want to have a successful sexual relationship. And they can't or they don't know how to and also where do our children learn about sex how do they learn about it how do they find out about stuff you know in a modern society what do they do they're 13 years old 14 years old they go to a party they're drinking or they're taking some pills and then the next thing is they're kind of screwed up they're out of it and um, they get raped because they're we have not created an environment for them to learn about their sexuality we don't teach them how to drink alcohol we don't teach them how to dr to use drugs we forbid forbid them from using it yet we're drug addicts open up go there in your bathroom and open up the cabinet and there's 30 different bottles of different prescription medications so you're a drug addict and you're taking or we're drug addicts and taking all these pills but then we're not teaching our children anything 
So what happened? They're 13, 14, 15 years old. They go to a party. They get fucked up because they're drinking or partying. And then the next thing is they get raped. So it's all wrong from the beginning to the end. So we have to go through a revolution. But number one is we have to admit, number one, we cannot be in this denial any longer and denying that this is not a problem and this doesn't exist. Because it's our biggest hang up in this life. Your parents didn't want to talk to you about sexuality. They didn't want to have anything to do with it. Who did you learn anything about sexuality? Maybe some of you were lucky after you started your, your, or the girls, some of them, maybe after they started their menstrual cycle, maybe the mom came and talked to you for five minutes. Or nowadays, maybe some of them in Western society, the parents are more modern. And, and so mom takes a 13, 14 year old daughter and put them on birth control pills which is a horrible thing to do because it leads into creating leaky gut. So later on you have a leaky gut because you were on birth control pills and you took a lot of antibiotics and stuff like that. So nobody's really teaching you anything about it. You have to learn it in school from friends or on online. So the whole system is screwed up when it comes to this and we have to start with ourselves we have to number one always take responsibility for yourself and educate yourself that's what we need to do by educating ourselves and this is a very sensitive area, so a lot of people, you know, when I'm in my workshops and my retreats, if I start talking about it, everyone starts to get like, nobody wants to really talk about it. Uh, Hilda, I got your message. Thanks for the Insta. I don't know why I try to broadcast live on Instagram and and it doesn't happen this is like third time that has happened either something's wrong with my phone or there's something's wrong with the application i don't know so but thank you for your message i got your message cool anybody has any question any comments do you want to wave at me or Un, uh, mute, uh, mute yourself, unmute yourself, or write on the chat box. Nothing? Nobody wants to talk about it? Okay. Yeah, hi. Um, Breda. Hi, Breda. Hi. Yeah, um, well, welcome I back. Understand. Thank you. I understand um, what you've been saying. I'm in full agreement with you. Uh, what's coming to me, and, and Tantra is not new to me, but I, I, my, my question to you is, what is the solution that you see, seeing that uh, the world is as it is, and that Tantra is seen as negative, etc., etc., and with the young children, of course, the education and everything else. In other words, what building blocks need to be put in? What could we do? What can the world do? Um, we, I think we all pretty much know it, it's a problem, and pornography, and uh, uh, I mean, it's just totally rife, and uh, the abuse of children, and marriage abuse, everything else. So there's nothing particularly new there, though, when you hear it all put together, it's quite distressing uh, that it's so widespread. Um, what can you offer us as 
perhaps a way out of this right. on the positive side. Right. Well, the... I mean, these are general guidelines that I'm talking about. Of course, I'm not... Uh, I haven't spent all my life on this subject to uh, dwell on it or it's the it's things that I recognize it's as I went along like how come something that I very much love and I think about it because I love sex and something that my whole being desires to have literally every day is so distant and so far away and it's unapproachable and it's very much attached to guilt and shame so it made me to look deeper into it and then when i had uh tantric experiences that with a partner that I went into these spaces of complete divine oneness, of losing my identity as a separate, separate person from the whole, from the source, and, and coming into these spaces of complete like, oh my God, oh my God, of coming into the Godhead, a pure, divine consciousness, pure oneness, then, <coughs> excuse me, it made me, it led me to this more investigation of trying to figure this out, that there is something really majorly wrong here. So, of course, we're talking about the idea of a utopia and the idea of A general shift in the consciousness because all, for, first we start answering your question is you you have to educate yourself and if you go online if you go on YouTube and YouTube is a great teacher and you type in benefits of orgasm or benefits of masturbation and you start to listen to all these amazing teachers and then you're going to find like a list of different uh, positive uh, things that masturbation uh, and having orgasm in your, uh, it offers to your body from having a better skin, from hair growth, from being able to sleep, from... Uh, creating chemicals that are uh, fighting cold and flu and cancer and dead cells. So uh, balances your, your hormones, balances uh, your depression. You discover all these things. So the number one thing I would say is educating ourselves because there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of us, they're operating from lack of education. So this is science. And it comes with facts and, and proven evidence. So that's the number one thing we need to do by educating ourselves. And then objectively looking at things like yeah, every time I talk about sex or even at this age, if I want to masturbate and there's the very, very first thought comes to my mind uh, that is the shame and guilt. And where does that come from? Why, why all of a sudden there's a moment that I feel ashamed or guilty? Where is it coming from? which is very well connected to, yeah, being a child and your parents have told you or your society or you heard it from here and there or if you went to the, ch you were going to the church or the mosque, they told you this is bad. Well, if it's bad, why is it the number one industry on internet 
How could that be? Why so many people are surfing online and looking at pornography or looking for sex workers if it's bad? <laughs> Why is it the number one industry? And if it's bad, so why is it being used to produce human beings? How could nature create something, if it's bad, that you have to have sex to have children? So how, how could it, then why did nature produce this? So, as I mentioned, first you have to educate yourself and reprogram yourself to recognize this is a deep, deep, screwed up conditioning that we've been conditioned. We're completely hypnotized by this. And look how many issues we end up having because of this. And then, you know, you go deeper and then all these other hypnosis, like marriage, like getting married. And a lot of people think, okay, once I get married, I'm going to have sex. Oh yeah, then my problem with sexuality is over and I'm going to get it. But actually, it's the other way around. Most probably you're going to have sex for the first two, three years and after that you're not going to get it anymore. And I, I believe that my discovery that most of my married friends are very, very sexually frustrated. And when I'm asking them, are you getting it? They're not getting it anymore. They actually hate each other. So obviously marriage is not the question to it. And if that was the question, why people get married and then they're having affairs with other people. So, so the whole system is wrong from the beginning to the end. It's almost, um, there seems like we need to, um, uh, as we move towards uh, 5D, and our consciousness raises, then we'll, we'll be able to, I'm not talking about those of us here being involved in with you, obviously we wouldn't be here if we weren't somewhere in there. But I'm talking, looking at the, the world in general, all the things you mentioned, which are absolutely true, and horrific things go on in the name of sex. Um, but it's almost like, like what's the chicken and what's the egg? We almost need the higher consciousness to see the, the, the beauty of the greater. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to right. say? It's hard to come from down here to up here. Yeah. I get the users, the yeah. PC, talking, right. I mean, that's just hold on. So how do we deal with the reality right. of life as we have now and contribute positively towards that, towards the education of that, I guess? Yeah. You start with yourself, always. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. You, you start with yourself and to free yourself from this, from this bondage, to free yourself sexually from this false idea and, and the shame and the guilt that's been literally injected into you from the very early age in life. And you try to free yourself from that. So that's how we start. And collectively, slowly, slowly, as this is shifting and it's raising to a higher consciousness, which, you know, requires another wave. Uh, yes. Because it's not something one person can do it comes as a wave of a general consciousness that of course it all falls into the divine will and uh, when the time is right and the new wave comes and all of a sudden humanity as as a collective it starts to slowly wake up to itself 
all the old systems need to be be uh, put away. Like even the marriage. You know, I'm, the this whole idea of uh, about a couple get married and they live together and happily thereafter. It's a hoax. It's it's just an illusion. Look around you and see how many divorce divorces you find. And look around you, see how many happy marriages you find. Truly, they're happy. And I'm not saying that people don't get married and they don't stay together happily thereafter. It does happen, of course. It's a it's that that is a possibility in life because life expresses itself in all different directions. So that happens too. But the marriage union is a failure. It's not working. Maybe it works for a very, very small percentage of people on the planet. But as a whole, it, it is a failure experiment. And it's another brainwash. It's just not working. So it needs to go. What happens is, yeah, when the couple come together and they have children, children should be growing up in the village with other children, with the elders, with the grandmas and grandpas and all the parents, not children just growing up in one family, which doesn't exist anymore. Because it's basically in the modern world, it's a single mother family. It's a single mom raising the kids. And that creates a myriads of different issues. It's the worst thing can happen. It, it is cool now, you know, that couples don't even get married and a lot of moms they want to have a child so they find a host they find a guy to get pre pregnant from or bringing a baby in a tube or whatever and now you're raising a child and obviously single mom needs to work and make a living so she's not going to be available for the kid so the kid is growing up in a nursery and with nannies, so there is serious abandonment issues there, and there's serious anger. So, and we can see what a mess we have entered into as as a race. And even if there is parents, still it's a disaster because how many of them last? How many we have, people here been married two or three times? And they have children from different people. And the kids are abandoned. <clears throat> this system doesn't work. You don't have to be uh, go and study rocket science or quantum physics to realize that it doesn't work. You don't even need to go to school. You just use your common sense. This system doesn't work. As simple as that. So why not? Let's blow it off. Forget about marriage. Forget about this commitment that you get married to this person and you have to be committed to them sexually for the rest of your life. Because it's bullshit. You naturally are attracted to other people and you want to try them. Maybe you exercise that, maybe you don't. But you have to be allowed to be able to do it. That if you want to have sex with someone else and it's going to be free, safe sex, you have to be allowed to do it. Not be cut off there because you got married to one person. So that's another sexual repression being put on you, which is going to twist your mind because all you're thinking about is you're married to this woman or man. And after a few years, all you're thinking about is you're thinking about her younger sister or her best friend or other women. All you're thinking about all day long is other women except your own partner. 
and you lose your sexual juice for him. It doesn't work. It's not working. And the kids, and that pressure on the parents to cater to kids at home, it's so much pressure on them which if we change the system parents will create kids the couple creates kids but the kids are living in a commune with other kids and rather than have, having one parent or two they're having lots of parents they're getting a lot of love and of course the parents can go and spend alone time with their kids they're allowed to do that too but they don't have to and kids are not forced to be in one home with one parent or two now they have access to grandmas grandpas the village the society who's collectively loving them and catering to them so kids would never experience being abandoned. They're never left out. And the parents are not in this situation that they have to work all day long and rush to the um, nursery school to pick up the kid. And then they have to spend time with their kid when they're exhausted and tired and they have no energy at the end of the day. And now they can't even have sex anymore because their energy is gone. All of a sudden we create space. And we tackle a lot of the issues from everyone. So all of a sudden sexually you're not restricted anymore. Because you don't have to be with this person. Yes, you made babies with them. Now you don't have to be with them. That pressure is gone. That you can have sex with somebody else if you want. So it just opens, creates space. And as things open and it creates space, it becomes healthy. Because the energy is flowing naturally it's not restricted and when we do it correctly we learn that sex is not just an act of da 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 we could be but now we can since we're not really deprived from it and we're not repressed then okay i can take time with my partner and I can build this energy and I can raise the energy from the base of the Kundalini from my torso from the first chakra I can build the energy and bring it up to my fifth chakra to the heart to the fifth chakra so I can express and then I can bring it to my third eye so I can see and have wisdom and lead it to the crown chakra so I can have access to cosmic consciousness to sexual energy something which is free and it's readily available so people can openly approach each other and and offer that to one another so it becomes free and available to everyone and it doesn't have to be twisted you don't have to trick people to it because there's no need anymore it's become available and it's there and it's okay and it's encouraged and it's educated correctly so it doesn't we don't have to cultivate diseases and we don't have to be hush hush under the behind the scene to do it now we're understanding it and we're using this energy um, hi hi Sara Lee 
I'm unmuting you. You wanted to ask a question. Are you there? Uh, Lee, are you there? Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, nice to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you too. Um, yeah, it's great listening. Um, this is this is a this is a brave topic <laughs> because this is a, yeah. yeah. This is a topic. I've always been very sexually active, right? Uh huh. Even Congratulations. Today, Congratulations. Yeah. That's why that's why you yeah. look so good and you're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always loved sex. But the thing is that um you know, like oh hang on, there's there's that coming in. But um the thing with me is that I've always been sexually active, right? And uh I find now that since I've gotten older right that my libido is changing somewhat and i feel a little bit disappointed about that right so i need to kind of like uh, i'm just wondering would chantra help me um you know cultivate more shakti i find that my shakti kind of goes up into my heart space you know that i utilize it to just kind of find a deeper space within myself to kind of drop down into my my breathing body but um and I've used that kind of as a space that has been kind of self-realized rather than with another, if you get rooms. Right. Okay. I have never experienced Tantra with a man. Right. Ever. Okay. But, but I'm at a stage where it's like, I suppose when you come to the age of 44, it's a dangerous age for a woman because you're hormonally changing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, do how do we how do we cultivate the shakti and the you know to 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 enjoy sex and tantra at an age when the libido is kind of dropping somewhat right you know i know we want my libido to drop <laughs> well yeah well part of it right go ahead i'm listening uh, a part of it is hormonal, and I understand that's a part of the nature, and that happens. So these days we have access to uh, hormones, and we can balance them uh, if we connect with the right uh, specialist. So a part of it is that. Another part of it is very mental, because you say like you're losing your libido, but I bet if uh, Antonio Banderas shows up in your office, you're going to have a lot of libido for him. <laughs> All of a sudden, your sexual energy comes back up again. You, you, you may not have that energy for the same guy you've been seeing for whatever number of years it is, but if someone new attractive sexy shows up all of a sudden everything changes so a lot of it is also mental yeah no i agree with that there's a lot of kind of um there's a lot of shame and guilt around finding about this idea or notion of loyalty uh, to to one person and um that's something that i've struggled with because i am loyal yeah as in like my heart is loyal when i choose somebody right stay with that person you know so it's like but i do kind of i do find myself being attracted to other people but you know it's like the secret part of me kind of shuts down a bit when i'm with somebody do you get me yeah i understand i get it i get it so you already answered your own question because um again it's naturally when you meet other men you get very excited so and then when you get very excited meeting other men is that a bad thing this life no. yeah this life force comes over this excitement comes and takes over so what how could that be a bad thing but then we've been conditioned all right to believe that is a bad thing 
because we're conditioned to believe that you're supposed to be with one partner, you have to be royal to them and uh, loyal to them, and if you're um, fooling around or you're attracted to someone else, there's something wrong with you and you're not good enough. But as you meet someone else, you get so excited and you feel life. You feel so alive. All of a sudden, you're fixing your hair, you're doing this, you know, you're picking up little hair here and there and, and you're paying attention to how you're dressing and uh, you, maybe you start going to the gym. Um, even though you don't, you're not having a fling with them, but just a new man showed up in on your radar and all of a sudden you feel very energetic and you feel you feel very alive lively i can see how that is a bad thing except we've been conditioned to believe that it should not be because i am with one person and i'm committed to them and i should not get excited over other people so it's more a conditioning than the reality of the nature. So how do you break beyond that control? How, how do we what? How do we break that control within ourselves? That yeah, of mind? yeah by, by self-observation, by recognizing the recognition that this is a conditioning of the mind and going towards your nature. What does your nature tell you? Because the nature is very primordial. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. So, but this is an overall, this is a collective thing because it's very, first you start with yourself. But overall, it's something that requires collaboration because let's say you are with someone, you're in a committed relationship with somebody and uh, they're not working on themselves, you're working on yourself. So it's very difficult. You can't explain this to a partner that, hey, I'm getting really juiced up by other men and they really turn me on and i fantasizing about them or I want to have sex with them. Obviously, if someone's not working on themselves, they don't understand it because it's the old school mentality and they'll freak out. So a part of it is to liberate yourself and and go beyond shame and guilt, but also, if you're in a partnership with someone, it needs to be shared and it needs to be brought out into the light and, and be transparent. Who do we have here? Uh, Kim? Hi, Kim. Do you want to uh, ask you your question and everybody else hears it? Sure. Hi. Hi, Kim. Yeah, good morning. Did you move to Florida, by the way? opening escrow this week and we will move by the end of the year. Okay, great, wonderful. So, all right, shoot, I'm here. Um, since I walked my spiritual path about five years ago, I noticed that I lost my um, desire for sex. I mean, probably at the same time, I'm 56. So is that part of um, menopause uh, time frame? Uh, is this something beyond the menopause or beyond my spiritual journey, being a Vipassana meditator and, uh, you know, um, can you, I, I also have a friend that is on the call uh, going through the same, we're both married and we find ourselves having less uh, sexual desire. Right. I mean, okay, that, and that's a great question, a uh, subject to bring it up because, um, that's fine too. I mean, if naturally you, you're you not inclined and in sexual activity or the thought of it or the desire, it's far out. It's like, great. I mean, that too is allowed to happen. If it's happening naturally, 
Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. All right. Okay. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not where we're, I'm, my purpose of this, uh, like today's topic of the academy, uh, it's not condemning it in a way that you should have it or you should not have it. It's just to clear this illusion and, and to bring the subject of sexuality and spirituality and marriage uh, into the light and really looking at it. But if the energy is not happening, then it's not happening. And there are some, for example, this misconception that a lot of people have regarding sexuality with spirituality, that there is this thing that if you're a spiritual person and you want to reach God realization, you should be celibate. So there are schools of spirituality that are practicing that. Uh, and promoting to be celibate. And if somebody naturally is inclined to go that direction, that's fine. It's never been my experience. As long as I remember, I, I've had sexual energy. And, uh, and it's been my reality. And I, I don't see how that could have been a hindrance with uh, divine and and uh, divine consciousness. Basically, I'm thinking if if this is a bad thing, then why is it created? Why God created sexuality, and that's the form of reproduction. And how could that keep me away from God realization? Because it never did. How do we work with with this energy while staying married through the relationship? Um, okay, let me see if I understand that. Say that. Say that again. How do you? Uh, could you elaborate on that? I'm not quite sure if I understand. Well, our spouse have their needs, and we have. Uh, we don't feel that desire, and it, it's not it's not that we lack the desire for our spouse and desire for others. It's just that we just don't have the desire. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So this goes back to what I was talking about. Is I I said we're caught into this system which is not really working and falling apart. So. Okay, so you come to this point, again, I'm not a marriage counselor, I never, I, and I don't claim to be, or, or a sex counselor, I'm only going based on my own findings in this period of my life that I've discovered to know myself, that's all I can talk about, okay? So, it, this is not an area of my expertise, uh, but, um, uh, it, it is it is a paradox because you have arrived at this place that you've lost your your mojo for having sex and there's nothing wrong with it and your partner maybe still want to have sex so it is a dilemma how do we deal with it i mean are you able to let him go and he can go find it somewhere else if you can't give it to him Is he willing to go somewhere else to get it? I, I'm, I'm, see, that's why I'm saying the whole system from the beginning is not working. Is this marriage union thing that you have to stick to one person and you're not allowed to go and explore your sexuality with anybody else. This way of thinking, it's already wrong. It's not working anymore. It's going to fall apart. As we can see, it's falling apart. 
It's just going to be a point in our lives that we come out of this denial and we really look at it and we say, you know what, this is not working. So I guess as a collective, we're not there yet. Could it be in my spiritual practice about detachment in terms of letting go of clinging, craving, addictions, and attachments? Of what? That you don't want to have sex because you're spiritually evolving? Is that what you're saying? Uh, de detachment from everything in terms of addictions, cravings, addiction for food, for anything, you know, things that you must have. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm shedding my attachment to material stuff, to anything external, you know, attachment to pain, to anything, a medication, all these right. things that right. uh, when I'm practicing. Yeah, could be, could be, yeah. I mean, I guess my guess is as good as anyone's. Yeah, it could be. I mean, could naturally we're drawn to this place of not being sexually inclined? Uh, yeah, I mean, is there something wrong with it? No. I, I don't I don't see see it wrong or right or should or should not if you're not feeling it you're not feeling it and that's cool there's nothing wrong with it the problem is that when you're not feeling it and then you have all these dogmas and belief systems that there is something wrong with you and you should be feeling it or vice versa you're feeling it and then you're giving yourself all these guilt and shame, uh, guilt trips that you shouldn't. And that's what's happening right now on the planet of how much we give ourselves a hard time and guilt, uh, guilt trips that why am I feeling it? Why do I desire to have sex while I have a partner? And I have a beautiful partner and she's beautiful physically and loving, da, 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 but I keep thinking about her best friend or I keep thinking about other women or men. That's where the problem is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you brought it up. Hi, Sophie. Long time no see. Are you still there? Are you still? Oh, yeah. Hi, Sophie. I haven't seen you or spoken to you for ages. Uh, oh, hi. Sophie, Sophia, <laughs> Sophia, hi. Yeah, hi. hi. Yeah. Hi. Oh, my God. I, I, I know. And this is so wonderful to be able to check in with you all. My God. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah. People. Yay. Yeah. Are you still living in Venice area or where where are no, you I located? Was there, I was there twenty years. Um, and then when COVID hit, I was just I just felt like I was in a cage. You know. Okay. I was just in this little box and you know, I just needed out and so I'm in the countryside of Oregon at the moment in a in a family home. And let me tell you, there's no sex happening here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? My mom and I are getting a lot of quality time together, which actually is a blessing as well. But right. my god, I'm sitting here listening to this and I'm thinking you know, I've seen a cowboy. I saw, like, you know, it's just there's, it's, it's, it's pretty much, it's pretty much a year of work for me. <laughs> you know, wow. so I'd love to unleash my energy, but <laughs> no man in sight. So good to see you. Yeah, I'm likewise. Terrible. Likewise, yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining us. So, did you have a question for me, or uh, you said I can't wait? I can't remember what that feels like. Oh, this, the, I, no, yeah. I guess my whole thing, my frustration has been, you know, I whenever I've felt sexually active and I've gone out to, you know, I'm still single, and I'm just, I'm so frustrated about that. Like, I have not had luck 
for 10 years to manifest the right and appropriate man for me. I don't have a problem with attracting men. I mean, men are dogs, excuse me, but they're <laughs> no problem. Like, you can go sit at a bar and you can have 20 men, right? It's just, <laughs> you know, that's not, you know. And I got very frustrated because I'm a sexual person and that energy would attract so many men. And then it was kind of like, it, sex became very boring for me. It was right. kind of like a mechanical, empty and I'm not one of these people that believes you have sex with someone and then it's like you're connected for a lifetime. I mean, I've had more than one sexual partner and I don't feel like I should be having to feel attached to someone for the rest of my life because of that experience. But I'm also a bit frustrated because I haven't been able to find the, the man for me that, that I want to go that deeply with. Right. I want to get connected right. with. So right. I'm in this very... Um, uh, I'm right. not having sex at all phase and I don't like it and I don't feel good about it but I'm not really like oh I want to go have empty sex with you know that guy I barely know or you know or the guy I've known for 25 years and we're just buddies or my neighbor or you know it's just I don't know where he's at <laughs> right you know and I, I have help that I'm alone in the country but you know even when I was in the middle of the city I was having troubles manifesting that kind of spiritual connectivity you're talking right. about without it being this big ordeal you know? right right I get it I understand I understand I understand what you're <laughs> 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 well, it's good. You're directing, directing your sexual energy in, in something positive. No, and then I went to the gym, and now that's closed again. I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> right. Well, th th thanks for thanks for sharing. How did you find out about uh, my academy on Facebook or? Instagram or I'm on the email list and you know I, I've been on these zoom calls working all day long and I just you know today I was just like my eyes started crossing in the last meeting and I don't have another meeting for another hour and I was just like this looks like fun this looks like right. something a change right. <laughs> something nice right. to do so yeah, yeah I just thought and I saw you and I said I haven't checked in and then I saw it was a zoom and I thought oh it'll be nice to see people and you know get a lesson in and I I've always followed a bit here and there your teachings and right. you know, you've always been up in the Nordic region and I was mm. like oh there he is off <laughs> traveling in Europe again <laughs> so it's nice to be able to get right. you right you know, well online. it's it's nice it's nice to see you and connect with you and I'm I'm glad you could yeah. make it yeah absolutely Thank you. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate everybody too. Thank you. All right. Cool. Uh, we're coming to the end of the academy. If um, anybody has any last comment to make, it's I can't believe two hours has gone by. Yeah. Hi, um, Ka Catherine. I'm trying to. Unmute you. Did you want to say something? You need, all right. I was just waving at you. Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Well, hi. Hello back. Thank you. I was just waving. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for checking in. Appreciate it. Nice to see you. Well, the two hours really go by. It's almost 12 o'clock. I, I, we must have gone into some kind of time warp. Something happened because I didn't realize two hours this was a um, I, I think we may have to have another uh, session and talk about this um, because we went to this very quickly and it's two hours gone by um, so anyway if anybody would like to uh, write to me um, you can write to me at uh, via uh, writing an email. Uh, my email is info at Zaratustra dot TV. Uh, my website is Zaratustra dot TV. Um, also, this podcast uh, it's immediately 
it's being right now simulta simultaneously being recorded on Facebook and Facebook Live. So uh, what we do is we take it, we clean it up, and put it on YouTube. Um, as well as it goes on my podcast. Of course, we cut out the meditation part of it. And it goes on my podcast, which the address is Zarathustra 5D. Um, YouTube, podcast, Facebook, and Twitter accounts, all of them are Zarathustra 5D that you can reach out. Um, there's a lot of previous recordings of the Academy that are on YouTube channel that you can check them out. And uh, remember, we recently finished the uh, Global uh, Self-Awakening retreat and everything is ready and you can listen to all of them on the podcast as well as you can watch the recordings on my YouTube channel. Um, feel free to reach out and connect with me. Uh, at the current time, um, I don't have any upcoming workouts, uh, workshops, <laughs> workouts. At the current time, I don't have any upcoming workshops, but I do, uh, and I am full on my life training program. So I don't take any new students um, on my life training program. But if you're interested, you're welcome to contact me, and we can have a consultation meeting together, and then I'll put you in a waiting list uh, because a couple of my students are about to graduate, so probably, um, I would say, starting the new year, I will take some new students if you're interested. So feel free to reach out and I'll set up a time and we talk about everything and your goals and how long the program takes and how much it costs and what it entails and what you can expect in it. I'd like to thank you for joining me. Our next academy is going to be next week, same time, same day. And uh, feel free to reach out and share your thoughts with me. Sending you lots of love and light, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Namaste. God bless.